a fast bike. <laughs> okay, it's a fast bike. Well, guys, pulled the trigger. V4, full carbon fiber body. This is gonna be my first ride on this. Can you flash a light? I can't start it. I don't know where it is. I can't see shit. It's so dark in here. Oh, I got it. I was like, what the fuck is going on? All right, go. Um, I'm good. Rookie mistakes left the kickstand down, as you guys can tell. I am pretty, pretty, I want to say like nervous, slash, you know, it hasn't set in that this bike is mine because I literally just got it. Uh, yeah, this is pretty wild. Officially own the last piece of my trio, which is a V4. I'm going to be riding it about an hour and a half back. I'm kind of like in loss of words. I don't know what to tell you guys. It is a full carbon fiber Ducati V4. 2018, but the guy has the upgraded fairings of the brand new 2020 V4. Full exhaust system from Acro, which is worth like five to 7,000 with install. A clear clutch, like this bike is ready. I've never bought a bike that's like been this ready. And it's it's wild to say the least it is pretty wild yeah hopefully he has the mirrors because I like riding with mirrors I don't like the bar ends you can barely see from the bar ends but this is insane it has 3,300 pretty much 50 miles on it uh, 2018 model as I said and yeah it's it's wild I'm in disbelief that I got this bike the title of this video is gonna be that this bike is actually I'm gonna save that for another video pretty much talking about things I'm not used to the clutch as you guys can see I just stalled and another thing is the bike has been sitting for like three months so I gotta kind of take it easy on the bike don't go too crazy and yeah, the Ducatis feel very different than my other bikes, like obviously the H2 feels different, but this one and the R1 have very, very different bikes. I still gotta get used to it, and especially the fact that it doesn't have mirrors. I feel so like vulnerable, man. I feel like I can't always see what's, what's behind me. Oh, another major thing is that I'm used to GP shift, which is opposite of regular shifting. So for me to upshift, I have to press down on the shifter yeah just right now I tried to upshift but I was going the opposite I was pressing down to upshift but I'm supposed to go up that's a regular shift what I have on both of my bikes is GP shift so I'm still not used to that I can't talk I'm like still flustered but I'm riding a fully carbon fiber V4 this bike is worth all right I'm gonna keep that for the other video. It's it's worth a lot and I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how much I got it for and everything too. You guys are gonna know all the details, super transparent about this. 
uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild to say the least. It's a little, I, some people would say it's stupid because I already have two bikes, but I don't know man, to each their own I guess. This is my obsession and my first dream bike was the H2 obviously. After I got the H2 I was like, man I can't keep riding the H2, so I need another kind of like more usable, like road friendly bike. And um, I mean, I thought about, like I didn't want, I got that 1199 which was supposed to be my daily, but the 1199 is honestly, uh, just wasn't it for me, it wasn't enough. So I switched, I sold the 1199 after like what, a month of having it, maybe even less, two weeks. And then after that I got my Yamaha R1M, which I'm pretty sure you guys have seen in the videos. And yeah, after getting my R1M, that bike was more than enough. I always had that thing in my head because I actually almost got a V4 before getting my R1M. And I was obsessed with like the way the V4s look and all of that. And, you know, it's the last piece of my holy trinity. The H2, R1M and V4. Those three bikes are my three dream bikes and I can't believe I officially own all of them right now. It's very surreal. <laughs> uh, and I hope this helps my channel to be honest because, you know, I enjoy making these videos and it would be nice to have uh, make that like a, a career or even at least like a side job to make any sort of money of it. You have to be extra careful since I just got this bike. If something happened, I'm not as experienced or, or familiar with the bike specifically itself. So I'm just extra cautious with it. This is insane. I can't believe this happened. Uh, the bike is like 99% is in perfect condition. It's missing like a bolt or two and uh, a couple carbon pieces are like minorly scuffed uh, from just moving the bike around and stuff like that. But other than that, this bike is pretty much in like perfect condition as far as I know. The guy seemed genuine, I believe him, so... Yeah, this is pretty wild. I can't wait to just put this bike next to my H2 and R1M. I feel like that's when it's really gonna settle in. Unfortunately, I'm filming at night. It took us a little longer to make that deal happen. Uh, I was trying to, we were just negotiating the deal and all of that. And, uh, you know, I was trying to decide. I honestly, like, wasn't sure. This is a very expensive motorcycle, as you guys know. And the fact that I already have two other really expensive motorcycles made me, you know, question if it's worth it or not. Obviously, the bike is worth it, but if it makes sense to buy another high-end motorcycle, and clearly, it's 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 stupid, you know. But hey, man, this is my passion, you know. And everybody has to find their passion one way or another. Sorry, I'm getting a little like deep and all, but. I just completed, like this was my dream garage, you know what I mean? And it was the H2, R1M, and the V4. And I don't know, I just can't believe I achieved that. And I'm 23, I just turned 23 a couple months ago. Yeah, in March, it's May right now. So yeah, literally a couple months ago. And I already have my dream garage. The summer is coming up, so I'm definitely gonna be riding more. Especially that I got this bike, I'm gonna be riding a lot. All the carbon pieces are from full six, so this bike is not, nobody cheaped out on it. The guy has all the receipts for all the maintenance, full exhaust system, it's, it's loaded. It's a ready bike, which I thought was nice because for once I don't have to find parts, buy parts, build a bike, which some people might enjoy. I think it's a little bit, like it's definitely fun because you get that excitement from getting parts and all that, but it's also a little bit stressful because you know when when you build things if you if you guys know like things tend to go wrong it's not always like a smooth thing where you just uh yeah you screw the part and you bolt off uh the stock fairings bolt on the new pieces of new fairings and it's never that easy you usually have to modify it make things work all that especially with 
a bike like this at full carbon fiber. I wish it was during the day so I can show you. I'm probably gonna film my official like review tomorrow. Today is just like, this is literally it. This is me the first time ever riding this machine. So I wanted to kind of like capture that moment, walk you guys through like what I'm thinking because man, this bike, like it's nice. The guy was definitely uh, telling me that it's a little too aggressive and all that stuff, but I don't think so. This is like a walk in the park in comparison to the H2, to be honest with you guys. Like, yeah, obviously you feel the power. It's a leader bike, but I think the H2 is way more aggressive than this. This is tamed in comparison to the H2. And for this one, I think I'm gonna keep this exhaust usually with all my bikes. So, fun fact, my H2 came with a full Acro exhaust system, which I hated because it's too quiet. I don't like Acro myself because they're too quiet, man. Like, the sound of the bike is like, you know, that's the voice of it. That's how the bike like speaks to me. And the Acros are just too, too quiet. I understand performance, they're like the best but it, it, it's just not it. But for a Ducati, and since I already have two bikes that are loud, obnoxious, and all crazy, I might actually keep this exhaust. Like this is kind of nice that it's not just too much. You know, like I can actually hear my voice talking to you guys. I mean, partially because I'm only going 67 miles an hour because of traffic. But also, like, the bike is really not that bad. Like, it's loud enough, but it's not obnoxious like my other bikes. I might even get used to these barn mirrors. I wanted to put the stock mirrors on, but honestly, the bike looks so clean that I might just keep them off. I'm personally not a fan of, like, looking over my shoulder to see what's behind me. Because, you know, like, when it's right here, you can literally look with your eyes. And, uh... You can just see like if someone's coming at you, someone didn't see you and is getting close to you. With the barn mirrors, all you see is like flashing lights pretty much and like you have to actually look at your mirrors to see who's next to you by tilting your head down, which I'm not a fan of. I like to keep my eyes straight and slightly look at my like side mirrors. Another thing, yeah, checking if it's filming is a little harder because I have to go all the way down to see the beeping light on my GoPro. GoPros have issues every now and then. So I like to always make sure I'm filming and I'm not just talking to myself. What the f just hit me? I just got hit by something. What in the hell? just smacked into me oh <laughs> okay I can't wait to watch this video because this is this is what something smacked me right I think it smacked the bike or maybe I hope it didn't hit the bike directly onto my chest and it had like water or something on it my like visor is filled with water right now from all the years of riding in Orange County it has never happened to me but of course if you ride in LA, here's LA for you. It's all nice and pretty, but it isn't it, man. I wonder if somebody threw a bottle or something, or it has to be, because if it was already on the floor and it just shot up, it wouldn't be filled with liquid. I hope that's just water. It didn't hurt, so like it must have been some sort of plastic bottle with liquid in it. I just hope it didn't smack the bike and then hit my chest. Well, I hope we can see that in the video since it's still like fairly... Ooh, look at LA though. Downtown. Okay, this is insane. That's what I miss about my 1199. Ducatis are so light. So both the H2 and I have to say, choose the heaviest by far. It's like a pain in the ass to like throw around. My R1M is much better and wants to lean, but it's not even close to how light this bike feels and how I don't I don't get it. People that say they're hard to ride, I really don't get it. It's such a like easy bike to ride. 
I definitely think the R1M, the H2 obviously is much harder to ride than this. I think the same with the R1M. I think the R1M is actually like harder to ride uh, than this E4. This is just like, it's chill. I don't know what else to tell you. Also, this bike rests to like 14.5. That's insanely high. I'm pretty sure both of my bikes do the same. Or I think they redline up 14, but they go to 14.5, both the H2 and the R1M. It's so fun to just do this. Then this bike just go around. And the bike is so light. Like it's, I mean, this is a full carbon fiber one too. So I can't even imagine how light this one is, but like, damn. And yeah, the bike is hot. Like my, my knees and my thighs are burning. It's way hotter than 1199 for sure. Cause it's, it's like still during, it's a night. It's like pretty chilly, but the bike is completely keeping me warm. I thought I'm going to be freezing on the way back. I definitely would have been if it was on my R1M. So yeah, I wonder how riding this in summer going to be when it gets really hot. Look, the temperature right there is at two bars out of five. And it feels like it's scorching my legs. <laughs> Not a baby about it though. It's all good. It's worth it. It's the price you pay to be on these bikes, baby. So yeah, I'm gonna need. Still gonna need to spend some more money on this bike. I'm gonna need to do a full oil flush. The oil is in not the cleanest. Uh, I'm probably gonna buy new oil reservoirs because come on, the bike is filled with high-end pieces, and then you have these like stock, cheap-looking reservoirs, and it just doesn't complement the bike. You guys already know, I'll have to get a seat for it. I'm still gonna spend some money on it, even though it's already have a lot of money into it. Let me, let me just say this. The amount of money that's in this bike can buy you another liter bike. It can buy you an R1 or a ZX10 or even an S1000. That's how much parts and money went into this bike. Besides the fact that it's a V4S. It's not a regular V4 guys. I got the electronic suspensions. I got the Olins everything. Or Olins uh, as 650 Eve says it. But yeah, this is a V4S. This is how you get this bike. Don't gamble. Don't spend your money on stupid shit. And save up for what you really want. <laughs> you guys can see I'm not riding like I always do, you know? This is a tip for all the new riders and if you get a new bike, hey man, no matter how much skill you have, don't go crazy on the bike when you first get it. Get a feel for the bike, see how it feels. If I went hard on this and like right away try to spill through traffic and you see how like easy it wobbles around? I'm used to my R1M where it's a little heavier to move around and the A2 even more heavier, but I already know that. I didn't know this bike was this light, I forgot how it is. You know, it probably could have gotten me in trouble. I could have like turned a little too aggressively and maybe tapped a car or something like that. So always get used to whatever bike you're riding right now. And you know, when you're a little comfortable on it, went through a few turns, like I'm still not used to the clutch. I'm used to the throttle already, obviously, but I'm gonna need to do like hit some more traffic lights to get used to the clutch a little bit better. So I don't install again because each bike that's the main thing like the clutches are so different this is a long ass night moto vlog for you guys I hope you guys like this uh, again I'm still in like disbelief that I own a V4 let alone a full carbon fiber V4 so it's pretty pretty wild we got the last dream bike I'm sorry R1M but this feels so much like easier you know like why not feel easier and actually be faster it's crazy but also has like the characteristics of it but I would I, I would say already my right hand from being on the throttle is like a little it's getting a little numb you know it's just just constant like similar speed on the throttle the bike vibrates way more than the R1M the R1M is pretty like I wouldn't say like no, it's, it's definitely a bit smoother. This is a little more like rumbly. It rumbles too much and it vibrates. It's very lit here. In this part of the freeways, I was like, you guys can appreciate some of the carbon. Looks, I can't wait to see it like during the day. 
gonna look insane. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, and you're gonna be seeing a lot of E4 content because obviously I just done this and I'm gonna film with this bike mainly. <laughs> Pretty big, probably like four gallons. This is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.